Всего в женском полдеке на этом чемпионате мира приняло участие 78 участников. Hello and welcome to Moscow for the IFSC World Championships. Tonight it's the turn of the women. Six athletes are out there battling for the gold medal and a chance to be crowned world champion. My name is Matt Groom and I'm here with Sofia Yokoyama. Welcome back to the commentary box. Hi, thank you for having me. So this awesome 3D rendered wall, we get to check out all the angers. And Sofia, we were down on the mats earlier on. Yep. There are some good boulders out there tonight. Yeah, it looks really fun. They've set a good set of boulders right there. And that is the dimensions on that wall, overhanging sections, slabby bits. It's going to be fun. Three and a half meters. Quite sure what that's representing, but there are the boulders. Four boulders. Starting off with a slab on the left. More physical in the middle. And then a slab that isn't a slab on the right hand side. But that is the slab that is a slab. <laughs> Starts off in some volumes, teaches over to the left. More physical there on that climb. And a big jump, thugginess, the arete like feature. And this is the slab that isn't a slab because those volumes make it not a slab. And Sophia challenging for them tonight. Mm -hmm. It's going to be super interesting to see what happens. This is a little summary of the semi finals. Sophia, you, you were 12th in this, close to the cut, but not quite there. Yeah. Talk to me about some of these boulders we're watching. The oh, that's my hat. <laughs> <laughs> the boulders were really fun and like. I think the root setters did a really good job with the amount of tops that were made. And yeah, they were just super fun to climb and like the progression in all of the boulders was super fun to watch too. And yeah, I had a really good time. Yeah, it did look fun out there. That's Camila. She's in the finals. What a performance from her. You can see how much that meant to her. Natalia Grossman coming in in strong, strong form tonight. Perhaps the favorite, but as we know in these finals, anything can happen. And there is yeah. Natalia. Super strong. So athletes were close. It was heartbreaking moments. And before we continue, there was an incident during the semi-finals. I want to read out a statement from the IFSC. The International Federation of Sport Climbing would like to deeply apologize to Johanna Faber, Austria Climbing and all the athletes and the sport climbing community for the images that were broadcasted today during the women's boulder semi-final. The IFSC condemns the objectification of the human body and will take immediate action in order for it to stop and to protect the athletes. And look, on a personal level, I'm sitting up here in the commentary box. We're watching some of these images. I am a passionate, passionate climber, and that kind of shot doesn't have any place in our sport. It's disappointing to see, and we will all be working very hard to make sure that something like that does not happen in the future. There's no place for it in our sport. So, Sophia, that being said, let's talk about the athletes out there tonight because so much training and dedication comes into this moment. This is the chance to be a world champion. Yeah. No, it's super fun and like especially not all top athletes are here right now so having these six finalists three of them are kind of new to the to the fight like world championship final and yeah like you said anything can happen and it's just going to be super interesting to see how things your go. teammate is in this final yes. and i said to you before we started please don't try to be uh you know uh, neutral in this i want you to be as biased as possible look you're with her every yeah. single day pretty much yeah what's her feelings no i mean she was like super psyched she didn't know she'd made it at the time and we all went running to her and we we're like you've made finals and she just like burst into tears and it was just so like amazing to watch and just to like tell her because she's been training so hard and we train all together in the same gym and well, a couple of days a week and yeah, it's just, I know how strong she is and I know that she can do super well and it was awesome to see her be able to show what she can do. Well, Andrea will be competing later on. This is a little video from earlier on, just before we went live. The athletes get time to observe the roots, check it out. 
see if they can piece together the beater on offer here tonight. That is our bouldering wall right in the center of the stadium. Lead wall to the right, qualifying routes for the next couple of days set up and ready. And just to the left of that bouldering wall is the speed wall. And that finals was the other night. And while you're here, look, go back and watch the paraclimbing finals that took place last night because uh, I'm addicted to paraclimbing, frankly. It was incredible. Yeah, it's awesome to watch. Yeah. It's amazing what they can do. Absolutely. So do go and see that if you've missed it. But right now, women's bouldering finals. It's a separate event. Usually these are sort of combined in World Cup events. We get the men and the women, and it's just about the women tonight. Yeah, yeah men climb tomorrow. There is Stasha Gero. She is so excited to be in this final. Brooke Rabatou, she had a shaky moment early on and then just pulled something special out of the bag. Two flashes in a row of the boulders and the top of the final one. Things were tight though. Yeah, the last boulder. Andrea! There is your teammate, Andrea. She comes out onto the stage looking very calm at the moment. Yeah, I mean, no pressure for her. It's all fun. Elena, representing the CFR, is on stage in front of her home crowd. Looks emotional already. Camilla from Italy. Four tops for her just underneath the next lady in the competition, Natalia Grossman, who is on what looks like some pretty dominant form at the moment. Yeah, this year she's been super strong. It's been awesome to watch her climb. Now, we mentioned athletes missing. Obviously, Yanya Garnbrett, we'd usually expect to be in a final. Yeah. She's taken a break, deserved a break. Of course. What does that mean, though? Because, as you said, it opens the door a little bit yeah. for someone else to come in here. Yeah, I feel like, because there's also Miho and Akio who aren't here, and usually they're a lot of the time in the finals, and it's just, it allows younger and other athletes to just like come up and show what they've got and which is also what I find awesome like right now like I said you've got three athletes who have never made finals before on the stage right there and it's just gonna like it's one hell of an experience it really is yeah we shouldn't remember I mean Yanya isn't unbeatable as well these athletes out there always earn their places Natalia's oh, sure. beaten Yanya you know it's yeah. like just because she's not here it doesn't really mean anything but psychologically perhaps as you said just allows people yeah a yeah, little for sure. edge in mm -hmm. So, these are the boulders. We are very excited. My name is Matt Groom, and I'm joined by Sofia Yokoyama, and we are here for the women's final for the bouldering in the World Championships. Oh, that sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so, that is our boulders. Red, black, yellow, and blue, the holds used on the walls. And look, if you are a bouldering expert, forgive me for this moment, I just want to explain to our new viewers, because obviously the Olympics attracted a lot of people to our sport. The aim of bouldering is to get to the top of the wall. There it is, indicated by that white circle with the word top in it. About halfway through a route, there's a zone, that's a bonus hold, and you start down at the bottom of the wall. So you climb, start from the bottom, climb to the top, and you want to do it in as few attempts as possible. That's the basic rules. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more to it, <laughs> but I don't want to put people off who know this stuff already. <laughs> Yeah, but it's like some people who are watching the Olympics are like, to get climbing into the Olympics, they're like, oh, but it's super complicated. I'm like, I mean, I don't really know how gymnastics work, but like, how is that more easier to understand than yeah, climbing? I've got a clue. Where it's just, you've got to top the border. Exactly, <laughs> gymnastics. I never know, like, when, when an athlete does something good or when they do something bad, it all looks kind of the same to yeah. me. Like, it's all pretty impressive. And I guess it's, you could also easily be biased, although here it's like either you make it or you don't. Like, yeah. <laughs> That is true. Not hard to understand, is Yeah, it? <laughs> points game, isn't it? But if there are any rules along the way, we'll keep you updated. That is our artsy shot we've been looking at all week. Uh, I watched the man arrange that. I don't know, I think he could have just done a little better with that. I think the chalk bag... <laughs> <laughs> it could just be some more artistic elements. It looks a little dumb, doesn't it? But because where is that? I have no idea as well. I'm looking out for it. But it, it, does, <laughs> it does somewhere in the stadium. But it does nicely set the scene. Yeah. Here. Shows us that we're in the climbing community. Exactly. We are here to watch some spectacular action here tonight. That wooden volume looks beautiful on the wall. So the wooden holds are beautiful on the wall. There yeah. is friction on it. And there's a lot of dual texture holds here tonight. And you can see them shining there in the light. How slippy are those parts? Super slippy. <laughs> and I feel like some root setters are getting like more and more mean where they'll put the dual texture side as of your foothold instead of like the friction part. And you've just got to like trust yourself more and more, but it, it's super slippy, even with your hands. During the youth finals, I, Root said for the first time I've seen it, put a totally no texture handhold in. Oh. 
I reckon that's the future, you know. I reckon I'm going to start doing it. Yeah. But it's also stressful. Like, you know you can hold the hold, but just, like, a certain brusque movement could just, like, throw you off because it's just so slippy. Yeah. So, Stachigo is out onto the stage. Each athlete will climb separately. We have four minutes up on the clock in order to work these boulders out. And Stasha, I was sitting outside reading a book when she came into the stadium and she is so excited to be here tonight. Yeah, it's so fun to watch her climb. Like, she just gives it all. And you can see in her facial expressions that she's super happy to be here and wants to do her best. The big jumpy start pressing with the right hand and then she'll bring it in to match. That's how we read the water at first. We did, we're experts. So. Oh, nice. Stasha immediately strong into the zone. That is the zone hold with the orange line on it, zone written. So like typically here, the orange tape touches the hold. So that the hold is considered the zone hold and not the volume compared to other uh, holders that we'll see later on. This is the big jump. And see, we did read this differently. I saw it as a static move, and you were like, no, definitely not, and I think you're right. It, yeah. is, a, it is a dino. I feel like static could be possible. You, you just got to trust your feet so much that, like, dino just may be easier. Yeah, well, it would be such a big lock-off with the left, wouldn't it? Yeah, to Press yeah, down all sure. the way out to the right. So Stasha... Ooh, skin problems. <laughs> yeah, Stasha, I know struggles a bit with skin. And she's just taping up. Expect her to probably take that off towards the end of the competition. It doesn't matter by that stage. But you can't bleed on the wall. Mm -hmm. And obviously, when your skin is thin, it's harder to climb. Yeah, and these are new holds. The texture, the friction is, like, super new. And it just takes off that layer of skin. Is that, I mean, when you're climbing in semifinals and qualifying, how much are you thinking about things like that? A lot. Especially, like, you've got to come in with good skin. Because, like, I didn't come in with super good skin and I have no skin left and I was taping my fingers during warm-up. I was like, okay, I don't need this finger, I guess, right now. I was taping it throughout the borders just to, like, be sure to not bleed. Because when you bleed and have to put tape on, it's just, it makes it also a lot harder. It just cuts down on the friction, doesn't yeah. it? You've got tape yeah. on your fingers. It's like using dual texture all the time. <laughs> so, Stasha, oh. attempt number three. And you'll notice Stasha, very, very expressive. She'll talk to herself, she'll talk to the audience, and we've got microphones right up on the stage, so you should be able to hear everything yeah, she's we'll saying. Yeah, we'll hear her a bit. Yeah. How's your Serbian? Ugh. <laughs> Don't understand a word. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a mystery for us what she's saying. But she did make that first go, like, look super easy, and now you can more kind of see the struggle. Yeah, she's just telling herself to calm down a little bit. She's still got a minute 20 on the clock. She has to complete the boulder within that time. She's already got the zone. She's really one jump away if she can get this first move again. Yeah, and I guess it's also scary with the jump being the last move. You're at least like four and a half meters of off, above the ground. And That's a very good point because Stasha, she had that devastating knee injury yeah. a couple of years ago. And every time I commentate with her, she's cringing next to me when she watches high moves like oh, this. I can imagine. Psychologically, must be super hard. Oh, she's got 50 seconds left, hurriedly chalking up now. It'll be a good boulder to start for her. She'll like it physical straight away. Starting with those blue on, lines. Oh. So again, yeah, those blue lines, they indicate a different limb. So two on the blue volume, two on that starting hold. I'm just going to give it one last go. 30 seconds left. Stash it up again. Watch her face. You can see the effort. <sighs> and look, shaking her hand. It could be that skin issue. Could come in. 14 seconds. She's going to go again. It's a lot of attempts on a physical move in Border One. Yeah, and that was too much. But yeah, you could tell her first go, she was really high up onto that undercling and then just. Move attempt after attempt, she was just like much lower, which means you got to just put in that much more effort. So when you get a move like this, that you know she cruised that first time yeah. through. What changes between that first attempt and the second? I think there's maybe like you underestimate then the move afterwards. You're like, oh, I made this first go, wasn't in brackets that hard, but then afterwards your second go, you know, you don't maybe give yourself enough rest either like okay i'll go again and then just like attempt after attempt your energy levels just go down and then if that's a max move 
you got to have like at least what three four minutes rest before being able to do it again exactly i read something about uh, if you're at your limit sort of six minutes is where you should be resting for yeah. these women have four minutes yeah. to do this so multiple times they got to give their max with 30 seconds rest absolutely right brooke rabatu comes out onto the stage what a season she's had i mean you scroll down just medal after medal her last medal was in innsbruck for the lead her last boulder and medal was in salt lake city where she got bronze so she has potential to podium here tonight what can she do so she's holding the volume a bit differently Ooh, with a foot up nice oh static into that hold yeah now unwinds her body to press up, gets the zone, and chalk up. We see this jump for the second time now here tonight. So Brooke's a lot shorter than Stasha too, so it's going to be interesting to see how this turns out. Yeah, Stasha 175 centimeters, Brooke 158. So a kick, a jump. Ooh. Those volumes are like good volumes, but the wall is quite overhang, and when you're trying to triple dyno, they just all of a sudden aren't that good. Yeah, absolutely. That graphic, by the way, down on the left, the bars that are half filled up, that indicates the zone if it's halfway. It fills up totally if the athlete gets a top. And we'll keep you updated with the scores. In fact, there's a massive screen in front of our faces with yeah. the scores. So uh, it'll be on screen and we'll keep you updated. Yeah, we have a good view of the comp wall. We really do. It, it, like, when I asked you to do this, I should have mentioned that we have the best <laughs> view in the house on this one. So, Brooke. Sick method. <laughs> Brooke pressing up. And now we'll chalk up again. Checks out his diner. She's got two minutes on the clock, plenty of time. She will be saving a lot of energy doing it that way for the next borders. Ooh. Static with the toe. toe hook. Neither of us saw that one. That but was. Gonna have to un oh my goodness, oh what my is that? Gosh. That was amazing. <laughs> that was awesome. I hadn't spotted the toe, and I was about to say she's gonna have trouble unlocking the toe. Yeah. But she but kind of went with the momentum. Yeah. And she double dynoed, so then she had complete pressure on the left hand to like stop her swing, and then already had the top in her hand. Well, that Rabbit was an too. amazing method. Oh, that really was. I did not think of that. <laughs> I didn't either. I didn't even see it. Didn't even consider <laughs> no. it. No. I mean, it's a long way. It's stretched out. And as we mentioned, she is a bit shorter, 158. Mm -hmm. It made the stretch look pretty straightforward. And also, she got her toe hook in super easy, like toe, dynamic toe hooks. It usually takes a couple of attempts to get in because you're not always at the right height for your toe. You not you don't always know where the hold is. And like, there she just easily pulled. Yeah, I think right that, that's a really good point. So. Andrea comes out. Andrea is out. <laughs> right, uh, unleash your most <laughs> biased commentating, please. Feel free. Andrea Kuhlman, 23. First final First at finals. the World Championships. Like You said she wasn't feeling the pressure. I can't believe that. Surely her heart is going to be going right now. Well, right now, I wouldn't say pressure, but more like excitement. And like, like I said, this is her first finals. Like, she just needs to have fun. That's all she's going to be doing. And the coaches are super psyched that she's made it. It was like a super good result for the Swiss team this weekend. And so, yeah, it's just going to be so fun to watch her. Wow, same method as Brooke. Yeah, smart way of doing it. And of course, with no expectation, you sometimes see athletes just relaxing a little bit yeah. and unleashing themselves. So yeah. she is straight into the zone. And I feel like the more you have fun, the, the better you do. It was like Brooke and Natalia back at Salt Lake. Oh, oh, that's a big jump and a fall, isn't it? Yeah. High up on that wall. So I actually, I think the dyno, the triple dyno was what they were thinking, but the way Brooke did it was much better. Yeah. Just like breaking much the safe, meter yeah, a bit. Much safer and it just looks so unlikely when you see it like that because it's round the corner. As you said, uh, you know, that kind of a move where you have to do a hand movement and then bring your toe mm -hmm. up, that kind of coordination, especially when you can't see your foot, yeah. not easy. You've got to really move your I I usually like look at the hand hold and then look at the toe hook, but sometimes you're too slow and like you can just see your foot missing the hold, but she did it first go and easily. Yeah, we'll see some replays of that, I would imagine, throughout the next couple of weeks. It's going to be a moment. Sandra has two minutes ten on the clock. Lots of time left. 
She's already got straight into the dyno. Now, might just be thinking about different ways of this or trying to work out the angles for that jump again. Yeah, and I was talking to her before because, like, my skin is terrible right now, but she said her skin has never been better. And I'm like, I mean, it's a sign for you to be in finals, too. There we go. Could this be her turn to stand on the podium? It's 23. Come on. Peaks since 2011. So she's eyeing up the dyno once more. And she's really good at coordination, like she just totally understands the way her body moves. So different methods, went for the match on the black. Yeah. That's going to be hard to hold that kind of a swing. Yeah, because you can also see that the, the volume is a bit slanted, so you're going to have to be super like strong in your hands to stop yourself from slipping, and you're going to have a big swing to the right, which makes it yeah hard to do. This is this press move. You see the angle of that hole, it's in no way positive. You have to match, and the wood is slippy as well. Yeah. So that was the minute bell. She has one minute, probably maybe one, two attempts. She's very quick here. Yeah, usually when you leave it a minute, you, just, you tell yourself, OK, last attempt. But then you never know if you like, if your foot slips at the beginning, or you just like know it could happen. And... Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh it drops God. down. <gasps> And tops out with oh a high toe. Oh my gosh! That was amazing. That, that really was. So the, the, the double dino style move then dropped back down to the black, stopped the swing so she was more static and yeah. then went right again. I, I think, I don't think she meant to do that. It was just like she was falling, but she was like, oh, I could actually grab myself. Yeah, you're right. Look, you can see yeah. it was a little fall. And then she's somehow still back on, went oh. up to the left. With 15 seconds left on the clock. OK, Moscow, uh, this is good so far. We're enjoying this. Thank you very much. This is an awesome show. <laughs> so she will move into second place with that one. Although she topped it, as did Brooke, she topped it in more attempts than Brooke. Just by one, though, so keeping in touch all the way. Stasha moves down to third. And we're halfway through this first boulder. Next up, Elena Krasovsky will come out. Krakowskaya. Krakowskaya. <laughs> we're practicing earlier, I messed it up. <laughs> So Elena Krasovskaya will come onto the stage representing the CFR. Taking a second to brush the holds. Yeah, and she has made semis quite often in bouldering and also in lead. And she's also like a super strong young climber, but never really managed to pass on to finals. And now she's finally in finals on the stage in like in Moscow. It's I mean, I would think it's a big thing for her right now. Yeah, absolutely massive. I mean, she's won medals in youth competitions before. Yeah. But senior, she hasn't quite broken into the very, very top. Just missed out the finals in 2020 for the Continental Championships. And Myringin, she was 17th, 27th in Innsbruck. So close, but mm -hmm. not this far. Yeah. She went with the same method as Stasha on her first attempt. So we know that's the hard, ooh, now with a heel. Ooh. She comes up, she always comes up with these amazing different methods that you would never think of. <laughs> that's a very physical way to do that uh -huh. move. I think she might perhaps switch back on this one. But it's good, sometimes we see this, you know, you try one method, you try another method, then you've yeah. nailed all which works and then yeah. you can go for it. Yeah, I guess bouldering is something hard to do because sometimes you're maybe hesitating on a couple of methods and you're like, okay, no, I'll try this one. And then you're not really sure if you should maybe try the other method. And so sometimes you're hesitating, which isn't good either. But yeah, I think it's always good to like try a couple of different methods. So physical. The problem is catching it like that. It's so slopey yeah. that, you, you know, your body's going backwards. There's nothing to stop you really. Yeah, you got to get yourself really high up. So then it's more of an undercling, but to get it that high, you just got to go so powerful and you've got to trust your feet on these volumes. So similar method to Stasha. Elena struggling a little bit at the moment Ooh. for the double jump up. Elena Zoskaya from representing CFR in her home crowd here in Moscow. It's exciting for her. And she was, I saw her after the semi-finals and she was just in floods of tears, like oh, so emotional to get here. Yeah, I mean, 
also during semis, the crowd just went so wild for their athletes, and it was like, I mean, for them, it just must be so much fun being able to compete here. Absolutely. So, tries again. Oh, so close. Legs swinging out, but the more attempts she has, doing it this physical way, it will get more and more tiring. Yeah. So she brushes up. I love these mics on the wall. You can hear everything. It's awesome. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah. Are you? Did you know that when you were competing that how how much we can hear? At no. It's going to be good. But do they always have microphones on the wall, uh, or is this like something oh, yeah. new? This is the most I've heard it. Okay. But, and I think it's a cool feature, but I do think maybe they should warn. <laughs> By yeah, the way. Yeah, because I. Oh, yep. She thought of the other method. Oh no. So she's got half of it right, but then wrong on that jump. Yeah. There are her coaches, and they've been so expressive throughout the semi-finals as well. We kept flicking to them uh -huh. on the camera. But yeah, with mics on the wall, I'm usually someone who swears a bit sometimes on the wall. So like, you're not supposed to swear really? on live, are you? I don't know. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> not. I don't know if it's an official rule, but. But I like, wasn't it? Someone got a red card. Oh, there we go. It is an official for, rule. Yeah. Because you could just like read his lips. Yeah. And <laughs> well, you got to be careful. Or a fine, maybe not a red card, but a fine or something. Yeah. Well, the mics though do allow us a very intimate perspective from the athletes. You hear, you know, every thud. You can hear the effort going into yeah. it and the no, physicality of it. And like the noises, the breathing, it's just makes it a lot more personal and yes. just like shows the effort that they're giving. So four athletes done. Natalia Grossman will be out next for the USA. The brushes brush it in between times, and it's up to the athletes after that. Which does take Camilla a little time. Next, no? uh, sorry, yes, Camilla next. Yeah, you can see Natalia yes. underneath. I was reading the massive yeah. scoreboard in front of me when Natalia was next, but yeah, Camilla next. So Camilla Moroni comes out onto the stage. She started climbing with her parents near Finale in, uh, in Italy. Yeah, she posted a Instagram story where she was like, oh, I made finals, thanks, Dad. And it was just... Oh, super awesome when it like when it's family who helps you get to your objectives. Ooh. Wow. So she uses the physical method but makes it look pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Right down low on that hole with the right now matches. Let's see what she'll do on this jump. No one has spotted the toe the brook found yet. Oh, that slip. So she was setting up for the jump to the right. Have a little pop, but okay. So this method, we know she's using the physical way through. Mm -hmm. Now let's see if she, she can keep it going. Yeah. yeah, and I also like the jump at the end, the Brooks method with the toe hook. She was also, I would say, lucky, but she had a bigger, higher probability of her foot slipping too, and it's amazing that it didn't. Yeah, sometimes you need a bit of luck when you're at this level. Oh, with the right passing. Yeah. She is in some form at the moment. Strong, strong athlete. Goes down low on that hold in order to set herself up for this jump. Oh. Heavy fall. The foot slip together for pushing off. So, foot slip because of body position or just the nature of that volume? Look at that, there's the, the Yeah, well, foot. the slow mo was quite good. You could see that it's like she's pushing up, and as she pushes up, there's a lot less like shoe on the hold. So she only had her tip at the very end when she wanted to push off completely. And so that is just, you're set to slip when that usually happens. Yeah, sticky rubber only goes so far, really. Can't defy gravity. Yeah, everyone else kind of did like a foot swing behind and then like just like jumped off onto the volume. So they're a lot like on top of the hold in the same position, in the same direction. Although she's a lot more to the left, so she needs to push a bit more on the foot. So a little adjustment is needed. She's got the time though. A minute 45. And again into this. But now she's got the foot up. Yep. And you can see, much easier to do it that way. So let's watch this right foot. Keep an eye on it. Not you at home. <laughs> <laughs> she's got a bit more of a yeah, swing. Yeah, she got the swing. Ah! Big power nice. scream. Sticks it. Takes the top. See, that is just awesome, hearing that. So, she's so happy. 
yeah, hearing the expression and her smile. And, and relief, because she will know that there's been tops on this yeah, boulder, yeah. and therefore that pressure, you know, will be building and building and building. Yeah. And the second she did that swing, everything changed for her, stuck there and knew she was going to make it at that moment. Yeah. Amazing. So, talking about pressure, Natalia Grossman has been sitting backstage, listening to tops, hearing mm -hmm. it, getting more nervous, but she's a lady who deals with pressure exceptionally well, and she just loves being in these finals. So, I'm excited to watch her. Out she comes. We just watch the end of Camilla's top. There is Natalia Grossman. Takes a moment, grabs the brush. And she'll have that competition heads head on. She'll know that really to, to, to get up there into the podium places, she's going to need flashes. Yep. She's going to need to climb these quickly. Yeah, I think she has a really strong mentality, like in Myringen, when she, um, I think it was the last border, like she just like took a couple of seconds before. There's a picture I think that she shared and you, should, you could just see she had her eyes closed, probably visualizing what was going to happen and she did the border after that and that was just like also really awesome to watch. Yeah, she's a good outdoor climber as well, 8B, yeah. 8C sports, so. Foot swing. This is going to be a flash if she can keep it together. She does. Now she just needs the match, gets it, controls it. Amazing. And she comes. So that will jump it straight into the leaderboard with that flash. And yeah, I, I mean, I said she was the favourite coming into this, or my personal favourite coming into it, just in terms of her form. And yeah, that, yeah. I, I mean, I think justifies my favouritism. I mean, this year, you can just tell that yeah. she's in great shape. She's been building and building and building. And a lot of people were saying, like, why isn't she in the Olympics? Well, she, she wasn't in the Olympics because she didn't qualify for the Olympics. Yeah. But she will have a chance 2024 yeah. and perhaps suit her style more with bouldering and lead instead of the speed in yeah. there. Yeah, I find it cool that speed would be a se separate discipline because it's just, it's a lot different training-wise and... Yeah, she's super strong in Boulder and she's super strong in lead. And yeah, I think the disciplines are a bit more alike, climbing yeah, wise. Absolutely. I've seen you on the speed walk quite a few times. Is that a regular <laughs> part of your training? No, not anymore. Done. That's but we right. have Swiss speed champs once a year. And so just to like, for fun and to have like some athletes, because otherwise there won't be many people either. Yeah. I participate. I'm a big advocate of speed, personally. Like, I just respect the athletes who do it. And it's so hard. It is. And, like, I think it did complement my bouldering a lot. Like, I was a lot more explosive. Yeah. And, yeah. So let's watch Stasha now. There's a little tiny screw on with the right that she's using. Now matches it. Comes out. That volume was in place. The big grey volume during the semi-finals wasn't really used. The boulder went to the left. This comes to the right. So we're expecting it to come into play now. Yeah, and that tiny hole she's holding with the left hand is really small. <laughs> yes, it is. There's no feet from now on. Like a sort of changing corners pitch and L cap this, isn't it? It just goes from yeah. facing different directions. Walks her feet up slowly, and so slowly. Her, ooh, foot slip. But yeah, this this kind of volume, it's you got to have your heels really low to have like more of the shoe touching the volume. And I feel like Natalia has super like flexible calf muscles because she can have so low, and so almost all the shoe is on the volume. Yeah. And that will help a lot more to yeah. not slip. That was something that uh, I got taught a while back, and it's I hadn't even thought about. It. I hadn't considered that yeah. you know, stretching is going to make it better for slab climbing. Yeah. Irritatingly so. But I, it does. Yeah, I haven't followed the advice, <laughs> but <laughs> I appreciate it. So Stasha on this slab and she's an expert in body movement you know she's so analytical of how to climb and the movements required yep. she just makes these adjustments between attempts yep. there you can see like her whole shoe is on the volume holding her breath as she oh. sticks it oh, so much pops. effort so much effort time paused for a second she stopped breathing and now she's breathing Stash is one of those athletes where if she gets into her own head, I think it can affect her a little bit, and she needs like a little bit of success in order to just like release herself. Yeah, because I guess she also knows that four out of six athletes have made also the first border, and you know she wants to podium and if not win, and so like it kind of hits you hard when you're 
didn't make the first one, but a lot of other athletes have. That man in the audience, by the way, said dad and coach, and he's one of my favorite people on the entire tour. I oh, love that man. He awesome. <laughs> he's just amazing. You can just always hear his voice in the background on the live. Yeah. When it's Stasha's, when Stasha's climbing. I haven't confirmed this. Apparently, he has an aftershave uh, named after him. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Yet to be confirmed. If it's true, it's amazing. So Stasha will pad away across the slab, out to the big grey volume. And now, look, Sophia said, all the rubber she can put down on the wall right now. And way higher this time yep. on that red volume. And that is just super physical, too. Big shoulder move. She's got through it. Let's see how she does the end. Once again, you've got to twist the volume, no footholds. Yeah, with a minute to go, she won't have a lot of opportunity. She really needs to get this done right now. Catches it. Needs to match it and control nice. it. Yes, Stasha. So, a top awesome. for her. That, that was just pure will. It was, wasn't she it? She wanted to make it in. When she went into that final hold, you could just see her fingers wanting to let it go and yeah. just refused yeah. to. So Stash is off the mark with a top. She's got a zone before. She'll jump to the top of the leaderboard because no one else is out yet. Let's watch that again. That red volume is the zone hold. And these holds aren't necessarily bad, but it's just the way they've positioned them and the footholds that you have just makes it horrible. Yeah, I mean, no real footholds. And I'm yeah. used to standing on footholds. Yeah. They're just standing on volumes. Yeah. And also an exercise, I think, if you're watching this thinking like, oh, why aren't they doing it? Go and try a boulder in your local gym within your grade and put a time limit on it, put a four minute time limit. See how hard it is. It changes everything. Yeah, especially in qualities, you have five minutes and I feel like just that extra minute is huge amount of time compared to four. So, Brooke Rabatou broke the beta on the first boulder. What can she do with this? It's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, will it suit her style? I mean, we know she's such an intelligent climber. She just thinks through problems. Mm -hmm. Something like this, where there's a lot of complexity to the movement, should suit her. And I also find it really interesting, like, height-wise, the different methods and how they get through the boulders differently, or if it like affects them in any way. So there's a screw on for her right hand, which she's got, there's that awful left hand, which she now drops, chalking up all the way. And let's see if she's got the flexibility to put as much rubber down as possible. She does so she far. She does. <laughs> but she's got her, okay, now she's got on the upper part of the volume, but she's on the lower part, which is even, worse than where she has her foot now. Oh. That's some strength to hold that. We saw Stasha almost hold that move. And then you just got to completely move over to the right, which is just pure shoulder strength. But Rabatou wants this, closes her eyes, pauses and rests. Taking a little couple of seconds to reset and off she goes again. Red a screw thing on that black volume that blocks the hole there, and stops the athletes using it. So she's got the left hand, she chalks up again, matches, and it's going to go for Ooh, a little pop little hesitation. here. hesitation. That balancing point is so fine between falling and being on, goes uh, back down to the back rest. Down to rest. This is a sport route. <laughs> I understand why they bring their chalk bikes now. Yeah, there we go. I mean, my fingers are so sweaty just watching Oh, this. same. <laughs> like, you can see my teeth. Yeah, through your skin. So, Brooke, close now. She's going to have to commit to this move. I don't Come think on. she can drop down again. Double. Wow. Two hands on it. Wow, this awesome. is this is going to be a back and forth tournament, I can see, because Brooke's just jumped ahead of Stasher again because of that. She did that flash, too. Well, I said complexity of movements. I mean, she was on there for an eternity, coming back down, resting, yeah. figuring it out. Yeah, she took two minutes. <laughs> now she'll have, though, the time to go back and recover. And what do athletes do during this recovery time? Because, you know, in my head, I think they just sort of sit there and have a sip of water. But are you stretching? Are you just chilling? What, what do you do? Um, well, I guess it depends. Right now, they have... Um every athlete goes through, although in semis you only have like five minutes and in qualies two. So like, 
usually behind if you gave it a lot of effort. I'd be like stretching out my forearms, shaking out a bit, walking around, drinking water, maybe eat something. But then some other athletes prefer to like sit down and just like close their eyes and concentrate. I guess it depends, but I think walking around and shaking out helps. Actually, you don't want to kind of seize up the finals or semi-final. So Andrea is back out again. Yep. She's sitting in fifth at the moment. But remember, not all the athletes, including her, have climbed on this boulder yet, so that leader will flick around. She's already got a top. What a top that was. Yep. <laughs> and she's really technical and she's really good at slabs. Like, it amazes me what she can do in training. <laughs> well, she's got to be for this boulder. It is all technique on this. Yeah, like we said, it's it's a slab, but not much of a slab. It's a bit overhang, but it's still kind of slab style. Yeah, those volumes just creating 3D shapes on the wall. Mm -hmm. Works her feet up, trying to get as flat as possible on that surface. Come on. It's setting up for this catch. Come on. And she's also super flexible. Oh, nice. Through. This is her flash attempt. Flash the first time an athlete tries a boulder. Pressing it out. So, commit time onto that black volume. No footholds on it, no screw ons. It's just pure volume Ooh. into the heel. Oh, it's stressful <laughs> watching. Like, I can't talk. <laughs> How much do you want to shout the beater out the window right oh, now? I just want to, like, shout. <laughs> but Feel free, just switch the off-air button. <laughs> It'll deafen us all. It's Andrea. Come on. Heel, right heel down, pressing into a flat surface of that yeah, volume. All the rubber of the shoes are on the volume. She needs to find the balancing point. Now matches, one move to go. Oh, and a big oh. left. So we've seen two different methods of this. We had Stasha's one hand out and then yeah. the match. Brooks double pop. And I think Andrea looked like she was trying to sort of aim between those two yeah. methods. Yeah, I think she was maybe hesitating a bit. And she had a bit of a, a foot pop, a little bit yeah, she came her in. Foot. She didn't move far enough into the hold and was her left hand was quite like straight and not high enough. Which would have made it hard anyway to hold the final hold. So she came close, got the zone, and I always think it's so harsh. I think always think I think they should get more points if you touch the, the final hole. I'm just saying we should reinvent the score. It's like a point five. Well, I actually find it interesting how they do it in the states. Like they have different points for like different heights in the boulder, a bit like lead but in bouldering. And like I think that's quite cool because yes, yeah, someone who gets to the last move but grabs a bonus, but then someone else who struggles to get the bonus and barely does the moves afterwards is quite different. Yeah, for sure it is. It's a tough scoring system here for the bouldering. Yeah, and she took quite a bit of time on her first attempt, and so now she doesn't have much rest. Yeah, 50 seconds, just under the clock. She needs to get through this section a bit quicker. She won't have that uh -huh. length of rest, but she knows the beater now. Yeah. Gotta trust her feet and watch that catch. There's nothing she's going for on that volume, it's just pure volume, and I think she's going to call it. Yeah. I think it's smart. Yeah, same. Two borders left. She's in second place, just ahead of Stasha. We've still got three more climbers to go. We do, so expect things to change. This is this is great, back and forth all the time during this competition. It's what we like to see. Yeah. And that is the scoreboard down the bottom left. But Rabbit 2 in the lead with those two tops at the moment. And Flash on that second one, remember. Andre Kuman, we just watched her in second. Stasha Gao in third at the moment. There are our podium places. Very nice lens, so lovely. <laughs> Lots of photographers here. And the official IFSC photographer, Jan Vert. Do go and check out his photos. He's been working tirelessly around the clock. Yeah, well, there's a lot going on right now. There isn't it? Bouldering, para climbing. Lead, everything. Lead, and it's yeah. nice to see an audience back in. Yeah, it's super cool. Like, I would say it's quite full. Yeah. 
it's pretty packed. I mean, the atmosphere that the athletes have been giving alone in the last couple of comps has been enough, but you do just miss that little fizz from the audience. Yeah, like. the crowd just makes it that much better when they're shouting behind you. So Elena is in sixth at the moment. She didn't top that first ball to all get a zone, so she needs to get her competition off and running now. Pressure is on. Yeah, I guess I also find it a bit unfortunate that they have to brush their holds because um, they only do have four minutes and that already took off like 30 seconds and I guess that's an attempt, but I totally understand this staff-wise. Yeah, you know, COVID and, and COVID, although the, 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 uh, the volunteers do brush the holds before they go on yeah. between times. And sometimes maybe it's almost like a, a psychological thing as well. They want to yeah. make it as clean as possible. She's working her way up now. This is her first attempt on this boulder. A little low at the moment, needs to go higher. Yeah, she needs to get that right foot a bit higher. Just using her toes there to press into that boulder. Sticks it beautifully. And then needs to rotate her body and her weight to the right. Nice. Now she can have a moment to rest. She doesn't have a chalk bag with her. <laughs> yeah. Because she can't chalk up. No, she hasn't really shaken out yet either, just continuing. The left. Ah, there's an underclaim. Whoa. Wow, okay. So oh my gosh. Matches Amazing. to finish. That's intelligent climbing. Yeah, she just like throws these methods out of nowhere that you never think of and makes it look so much easier. I mean, on, t on TV, that looks like a different move because that final hold is way above her head. Yeah. I mean, the, the flexibility to stand down on the volume and get the left and foot up. Yeah, like, she's super flex flexible and to be able to control that, like, yeah, getting your foot dead on splits above your head. Well, let's watch that again. That is the move and that's the angle. It doesn't do it justice. That he Her foot is almost at head level. Yeah. Slightly above even. Then brings the right, drops the knee, matches, wow. job done. Her that's a flash. Off is a flash and that will help her score and she needed it. Yeah, especially she didn't get zone on the first one. So great boulders from the root setters so far, multiple ways. It's always a bit of a shame, I think, when you get a boulder that only has one method and there isn't really another way of doing it. I like boulders where they can yeah. be creative like yeah. that. Like you've got six climbers and usually sometimes all six of them have different methods. And it's just awesome to watch how everyone thinks differently and everyone has their own style. So Camila will start off. That crack, by the way, in the middle of the black volume, you can't stand on that. It's not an edge or anything. It's pretty flush to the other volume. Not much to it. No. So she's on this layback move, laybacking when you straighten your arms like that, work your hands up with your body weight on one side. Pumps the right, slips with the left, but keeps it together. Snatch. And she's straight up much higher than what the other athletes, other females are at. So now she rests. No chalk bag for her as well. And with the left. Now what method will she use? She's going for the drop, drop knee. knee. Trust your feet big time here. Nice. That was well done. Another flash. And that changes the sport scoreboard once again. She moves into second place. Two tops out of two for her. Four attempts overall. She made that look really easy. Yeah, effortless, really. <laughs> but she completely turned her body in a different position to what Andrea was in. And so already she was much higher and much more to the left. So closer to the hold. So the brushes get to work cleaning up the boulders. We watch some more oh, replays. Yeah, Camilla's last bouldering comp. She was 21st in Innsbruck. Oh, just out of seven. Just out of seven. Yeah, heartbreakingly close. Before that, 13th Salt Lake City, 18th in Myringen. So. Again, close, but not quite. Could this be her night? You've got it, Natalia. Someone screams from the audience, and you kind of get the feeling at the moment that she does have it. Yeah. 
just have to bottle one. Like, yeah. She just proves that she is. <laughs> so off she goes. She flashed boulder one, was sitting on top. Jeez, Ooh. I said it was flush, apparently not. <laughs> oh, you can see there's a tiny, tiny gap, but like, really nothing to you. I mean, not enough for mortals, surely. <sighs> anyway, she's on the slab now. Need to work hard for this physical move, wants to get as high as possible before making a snatch out with the right hand. It's higher than anyone else almost, way yeah. up. Yeah, I guess it's really important in these kind of shoulder moves to be as high as possible. Because if you're lower, you just got to also give so much more energy bringing yourself up. Although if you smack it in really high, then you're already in that good position and good to go. And Natalia thinks about bringing the right foot up, drops it back down. I think she's looking to maybe pop over. It did look like that old toe hook. OK, but that toe is going to have to be released. Oh. Come on. Nice. <laughs> it doesn't matter what beater you use, Natalie Grossman's got all the tricks. Yeah. So two out of two. Jump her back up to the top of the leaderboard. <laughs> two flashes. I can't keep up. I'm exhausted. <laughs> We're halfway through, ladies and gentlemen. We're in Moscow for the World Championships. My name is Matt Groom and I'm joined by Sofia Yokoyama. Didn't make the finals here tonight, but She's here with me, and that is pretty yep. special. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for having me. And do go check out Sophia's YouTube videos, Instagram, all the rest. She's a prolific vlogger, <laughs> and they are very good videos. If you want to see training tips and advice, do go and follow her. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> little shout-out for you, though. So we pause and look at the scoreboard. Natalia Grossman, we just saw her. She's back on top. Brooke Rabatou in second place. Camila Moroni in third at the moment. But it's close. Yeah, it's super tight right now. And now we head on to a slab. Yeah, that didn't fit. I mean, we kind of jokingly said it was a slab, not slab. But I mean, the next one is a proper, proper slab. Yeah. <laughs> and it's going to be interesting to see how they do the start move because we were thinking of a mantle, but I think Stasha was, when she was looking at it, she was thinking more dynamic. Okay, so like a sort of jumpy press. Yeah, or like dynamic to the right onto the foothold, stand okay. up and then maybe like hold, yeah, something with the black okay. volume. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Kind of, it's a nice looking boulder, and that, <laughs> it's the legend. And it's just a traverse. <laughs> lives and breathes every comp with his daughter. There's Team Slovenia watching on. Stachigio will come out on her third boulder. This at the moment. I can hear her yeah. dad. <laughs> his voice is so recognisable. Yeah, so dynamic. Oh, I see what you mean, up to the zone. Ooh. I'm with you, OK. That is super nice. So I'm wondering how, the, if the mantle would actually work, like the way we were thinking. Yeah, really? maybe not. I, I just saw it as a static kind of movement, yeah. you know, pressing upwards, but maybe not. Uh, mm. Nice. Into the zone beautifully. And now there's a small side pull thing about waist height on this wall. Ooh, she put her left foot in the middle. Ah, she's doing it. Yeah, I would expect her to put the left foot on the screw on and then bring the right yeah, through. Yeah, I would have thought the same. She's heading back over, she might change. Yeah. There we go, yeah. And then cross in, yeah. Yeah, that's how I saw it. And then she can just unleash out to the final hold. And there goes back again, chalking up. Yeah, if that hold is so small and she's got so much tape on her fingers, like, that would not be good. There is a screw on, but it's awful. Out with the left. And then this final... Oh. The problem with that screw on is, like, it's right in front of, like, your stomach, so you can't get as close to the wall. And on slabs, you really need to just, like, stay as close as possible. So Stasha reaches into her bag. What's she going to pull out? Your shoes. shoes. Right. Yeah, those shoes... I only know this because I've worn them, are quite stiff. So maybe choosing a softer pair. Let's see. And this was the move we are talking about. I just had a few different methods. There's the screw on, which, I mean, it's barely there. <laughs> this 
pushes through. Yes, yeah, so that final hole, keep an eye on it if she gets that far because it's almost like they've bolted a bit of dual texture on top of it. Oh, look at that one-handed up to the zone. Yeah, she's understood the movement and I think she knows exactly what she needs to do. So she's got one different foot, a very soft one for the right, and a stiffer one for the left. And that seems to have done the job. Yeah, and look at that dual texture kind of screwed on to the top of that. There's a little sections missing of that uh, no texture surface. So yeah, for this move, she's just going to have to completely trust her left foot. Ah, oh, because there's nothing to hold above it. She's oh, changing her second shoe. Double soft for Stasha. She slammed the shoe down off camera here. Stasha is just such an expressive climber to watch. Yeah. I, I'm not sure, you know, in terms of keeping calm and all that, but I, I don't really <laughs> care when she climbs. I like to see it. I, I find it nice to kind of see their expression and what they're feeling. And yeah, exactly. She's a human being with human exactly, emotions. Yeah. And she's got objectives and she's so close to them. Like, I guess when an objective like slips out of your hands and so close, it's really frustrating. It's a big move, but she's... Makes it so easy every time. 45 seconds on the clock. She hasn't brushed once either, those footholds, so. Just banking on being the first athlete out. Might be cleaner, saves a bit of time, but it is risky, isn't it? So she holds the volume she's standing on with the left hand. Sweeps the right she goes up. a lot more statically now. Needs to match and control it. That's not going to oh. count. So you have to control that hole oh. with both hands. For a half, a, a fraction of a second, she had it in control. It wasn't oh. long enough. Let's watch that again. So she comes up, creeps the fingers, gets the finger right on it. Brings the left up slowly, slowly to match it. Just watch. Position held it, lost the right hand, just bubbled yeah. off it. Oh. I mean, when a finger lets you down, I just, I'd hate my body. <laughs> I get new fingers. <laughs> Astasha emotionally leaves the stage. She'll have a little time now to compose herself. Brooke Rabatou strides across the arena. With two tops already. Yeah, one more attempt. Than Natalia, that's all that's separating the two teammates. Really appreciate the music choices as well. <laughs> like it, sometimes we get some uh, questionable music choices, but I've, I quite like this. Quite subtle. And set a chill mood. Yeah. So she's much shorter, as I've said before. Oh. Yeah, that's a long Pop way. Slip. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we, we talk about height, and it's something I've said before. It's not that we're saying that things are easier or harder if you're shorter or tall. It's just certain moves suit certain styles. Root yeah. setters know this, and they set it up for them. So us talking about height, we're not saying, oh, she's not going to be able to do it. We're just saying it's a different way. Exactly. And, like, her method is going to be yeah, completely different in the way she does it. And, and it's interesting to actually watch that. And it's awesome to see that, like, bouldering suits tall people as shorter people. Yeah, within a boulder, sometimes you can get moves that suit the short and then suit the tall all within a boulder. Yeah. It's complicated the sport, isn't it? But Brooke so far is not getting close to this zone hold. She's near, but not near to sticking it. Yeah, she moves yeah. out of the wall when she's close to the hold, and since the hold isn't that good, she's got to just stay that much closer. She's almost bringing getting her knee kind of in the way on that yeah. black volume as well as she comes up. She's like struggling to understand at what time to push and set her feet. Grab two coming from one of the most climbing families I've ever heard. Her mum and dad both competed, and like yeah, she's awesome. her brother as well. Fantastic outdoor oh, climber. Nice. It's getting there, isn't it? Two minutes left. Yeah, but like typically this kind of move for her in four minutes is really short. Sometimes you're like, oh, if I just had like maybe an extra five minutes, it would have gone through, but fortunately. Four's all you got. So Brooke just reassesses. She has got plenty of time. Although, 
that slab is not straightforward and she won't be giving herself a lot of time to work yeah. that slab move out. Yeah, that's one thing you've got to work on. It's you just take too many attempts to make the beginning and then all of a sudden you just need one extra attempt to do the end, but you've just already taken three minutes. You unfortunately don't have that extra time to continue working on it. So Brooke is running out of time. Minute 18, she's getting closer oh. and closer though. But each attempt will be counting towards her score. Changing a bit, almost trying a little, and again, she's getting closer to that as well. The problem is, when you're in that position, she's going to have a hand so low. How are you going to get out? Yeah, she's going to have to really yeah. push out of that. But there is a very good foot. Yeah, but then you have no hand holds really. You're going to really have to. You'd have to change it to a palm down, wouldn't you, yeah. instead of to press up, and that's not easy. So changes it. 36 seconds. You can sense a bit of frustration creeping in now. Yeah, and she's not giving herself much time to rest because you, you just want to make it. I think she feels like she knows that she can latch that zone hole. Yeah. She's in. Yeah. And of course, with this many, this high scoring round, a zone uh, could be the difference between a medal and a not. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess it's also frustrating if you struggle on the first move, but you know that the next part could like work out really easily. And you're really close to making it, but. So no she did a little cardio work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's gonna, she was breathing heavily. There was a lot of running involved there. So Brooke leaves no top and no zone for her. Let's see a few replays of this. So she was getting close, but oh, foot also out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all know that feeling. <laughs> this feeling every time I see a slab is that feeling. So there is Team USA. Watching nervously on. Andrea Kuhlman is out next. I like the. Uh, is it? Oh. <laughs> You're supposed to wait, but the time. <laughs> yeah, tricky moment. Just uh, got caught there to so turn yeah, back around. Yeah, I guess you're like super excited to climb, but you got to wait a couple of seconds before turning around. I always find that a bit of a weird moment because it's, it's, it feels quite artificial. You have to run out, yeah. so you can see the boulder, then you turn yeah. around, then you face back in. And you've already read the boulder, so yeah. like. <laughs> Still rules, are rules. So. Oh, little slip. And you said how good she is at these kind of moves, these coordination style jumps. Yeah. She usually gets them down quite fast. And um, when we've had team trainings where we've had like tons of boulders for us and for the men, like she does the men's dinos, the coordination boulders, super easy. People are watching this at home thinking, I'm not very good. Oh, hang on, we'll stick with it. Oh, it comes down. Yeah, how do you train moves like this? Is there specific training for it? Um, I think on one side there's kind of like that explosive, you need to, you need to be explosive in, in the legs and arms, but then on the other side you've just got to do it on the wall. There's nothing really more that you can do than just like train it and climb it. It takes a bit. <laughs> So, she just reassesses this. She's not even using like the black volume. She's just kind of trying to hold on to the, to the zone. Yeah, she's not been given the point because she hasn't really used that zone. Judges won't award it until she does. Chalks up once again. Oh, Switzerland, but I know right now, and my co commentator in the box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's as close as you can get, surely. I actually wonder how good that hold is, because the way she's doing it, it seems to be quite good, but then she slips off at the very end. 
I mean, it makes it pretty impressive watching, if you remember back to Stasha doing that move, how easily, yeah. how powerfully she did it. Yeah. I know she's a little taller, but still the, the explosiveness yeah. that Stasha has. And the coordination that you need to be able to do that. So eyes it up again, goes down. Oh, I didn't quite have the feet movement there, foot movement. Coming up to a minute now. This bowler, the hardest, proving to be the hardest so far. Yeah, I guess slabs, you never know if it's going to work well or not. <laughs> oh, but she's still quite far out. Yeah, it's her body weight pulling her backwards. Yeah. So only Stasha so far has crossed that slab. And she's also quite straight, like she's right beneath the hold, although Stasha was a bit more to the right when she grabbed onto it so she could pull against the hold. Yeah, it's centimetres, but it does make a difference. Again, got that knee just slightly caught up underneath. And the black volume. But yeah, she's not fully using that black volume as a foothold at the end, so maybe that's also what's stopping her from... Now does kind of, but they're having to twist the knee down. Yeah, I think you need to be like full face onto the wall instead of turning. One last chance, you'll want to... Yeah, yeah she's in the wrong direction. Oh. So <laughs> frustrating for her, no zone, no top. Push her down a little. Elena is out next. We said she needed to get her competition underway and she did on the second boulder, flashing that with some insanely high foot beater. Let's watch Andrea's last moments on this, yeah. Yeah, it's always hard when you don't move a lot on the boulder because all you want to do is just like give it all you have and get as far as possible, but when you're just stuck on that first move, it gets really frustrating. Elena Kozovskaya comes out onto the stage. Big support from the crowd. Yeah. How it goes wild. Yeah, it really does. She takes a moment to brush the zone. I can't wait to see what she tries on this one. It's going to be interesting to see. There are her coaches. I think I have a TV show, that, isn't <laughs> So, making sure everything is perfect for her. Used up almost 30 seconds of her time. Yeah, I think psychologically also, like with these kind of footholds, you just always want to clean them because I think the cleaner they are... Oh, oh, wow. Well, she's sitting in sixth, which kind of doesn't really show the quality of this athlete because she's suddenly found an extra gear here. Different feet, she might have the feet wrong, hasn't brought the right in, and that's going to be very tricky. She's going to have to almost jump that right Ooh. across. Yeah. But it seems to work. She's trusting it. And she has quite rigid shoes on right now. But she's really good at slabs. Like, it's impressive what she can do. Yeah, the balance on that. Is and not... she's changing her foot up on it. Oh, come on. Nice. That is impressive. The arena goes nuts. <laughs> Flash <laughs> on a slab. Oh, so, she's actually got two flashes. Yeah, two flashes. That first one was really tricky for her. You know, you could yeah. see it slightly got in her head. She was emotional when she oh, went off. Yeah. She went backstage, changed something, and has come out on fire. Yeah, that's something what you've got to keep in mind, especially in bouldering. It's like it's never over until, like, the very end. Because sometimes, depending on what happens throughout the comp, it's the last boulder that just does it all and changes everything. I can't believe she made this left yeah. foot work. <laughs> like, I can't. I, I thought she was going to pop off at any second. Look, that right leg... Almost automatically going higher and higher, in the correct centre of gravity. Okay, it feels like we've been on a journey during this competition. <laughs> it's been really exciting. Oh, it has been, hasn't it? Camilla is out next. Last medal oh. was in the Youth Champs 2019 for the bouldering comp, so yet to get one for the seniors. It's amazing you've been fourth with two tops, isn't it? Yeah, 
this final is turning out quite good. I, I think so. I mean, sometimes people complain about high scoring rounds. Personally, I like it. Like, yeah. I like to see tops. Obviously, not all the same tops. If everyone flashes it, yeah, yeah, not yeah. great. But it's better than no one climbing anything. Exactly. Like, for now, every border has been topped, but not necessarily the same athlete has topped that border. So that's what I find more interesting. Like, that really just shows you, like, the different styles that everyone has as a climber. Yeah. Yeah, watching, uh, you know, six people fall off the same move over and over again yeah. is uh, it's challenging to commentate on Sunday. Yeah. So it's nice to have this bit of excitement here. Yeah, and it has happened in comps where either, like, all the athletes have almost topped all four or, like, there's only been one top for every athlete. And so it's really hard for the root setters, too, to kind of, like, find that middle. That middle ground, yeah. yeah. So we're about halfway through this World Championships. launching herself up the wall. Tonight, it's the women's bouldering. Tomorrow, it's the men's bouldering. Then we move on to the lead on Monday for the qualifications. On a Tuesday, we have a huge day, double whammies of everything for the men and the women lead competitions. Double whammy, I can't believe I just said that. I'm <laughs> not sure that's even a word. I find it quite fun to have like the women and men climb at the same time, so it's going to be super fun to watch the, the lead comp. Miller getting low and sticking oh. it. Very Stasher-esque movement, that. If Camilla can find a top here... She's going to... She's going to be right up there. in a really good spot, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, you can see she's her butt is, like, really far away from the wall and it's just going to bring her down. So what what's the solution to that? Bring your hips quickly into the wall or is it just a position when you're jumping? I think you need to push more onto then the black foot, so then you're higher and like, yeah, your hips are closer to the wall. It's all in the hips. <laughs> hips don't lie, as a exactly. certain famous song says. Camilla needs to unlock this movement. Yeah, and I guess here she's just like giving all in when she does that explosive move, so if she doesn't rest enough, it's just going to be harder to give that much energy every time. Well, she's got a minute left. She's running out of time here. Hasn't got the zone yet. Needs to a little bit more in order to get that. This is a huge move. Oh, nice. She's got glue on her hands there, stuck to that beautifully. And she you uses... can hear she's happy to have made it. Similar shoes as well. Same shoes Same as shoes. Elena, yep. Yeah, it's always been a big discussion, like what would be better for like tiny footholds or volumes. And I would say maybe like for smaller holds, rigid shoes would be better because your shoe won't like fall into the hold. Although volumes more uh, nice. Camilla tops out. Sorry, that's a very yeah. interesting topic. We'll carry on in a sec because Camilla just gets a top. We said she set very herself tough. up well. She's in the first position at the moment. She's yeah. been on fire since the very beginning. She really has. This is this is her comp. So yeah, you're right. The little the stiffer shoes on the smaller holds, you just it creates a bit more stability, doesn't it? Yeah, and like but then more softer shoes on volume because you want to get your heel as close to the like as much rubber on the hold as possible and but the fact there's two screw-ons on those volumes makes me think that stiffer shoes are, is the way to go yeah, on this one exactly if it was just the volume then yeah soft is the way look at that <laughs> i don't think she quite so believe she's happy. there yeah stretching stretching it's the top okay Just a moment to breathe up here in the commentary box as natalia grossman cleans up the hold I mean, I'd say that puts a bit of pressure on Natalia, but she's just like flashed the two first boulders. I'm like, does it really? <laughs> does she really feel pressure or, or not? Yeah, whether she feels it or not, though, she'll need a top in order to maintain her lead here. Yeah. Close. Height is interesting because I mean, she's 162. Camilla was 157. So Natalia is a little higher than Camilla, but again, just starting to get the, the, the whatever it is, the distance on that jump. Yeah. But it just proves like, yeah, height, it does sometimes make some moves harder or easier, but it is doable for everyone. Absolutely. 
Like sometimes I do talk about it with Sasha because we're both on the smaller side. And when I talk with Sasha, he's like, well, I mean, we just got to be stronger, right? I'm like, totally. <laughs> Natalia gets the zone, now starts her journey left. Crosses in. Stick. Your leg oh. shake, nice. Yeah, a little leg shake showing how much pressure has been put through her legs, but she will jump back into first position with that one. Just four attempts compared to Camilla's seven on that boulder. Staying composed and super happy. Sophia, I can't believe it's almost over. We've only got one boulder to go. I know, this has been so fun. <laughs> this is great. What finals here tonight. Natalia, look at that, brings the hand in to match. That's how small the side pulls are. And you have to then bring your right hand into the other side of that side pull. Just yeah, and keep finger. in mind, like, staying close to the wall with your hand, like, right in front of your stomach is really hard. And this move, her legs were shaking, but not due to nerves or anything like that. It's just how much pressure she's yeah. been through it. Yeah. And she had that kind of hybrid shoe there. That it's quite stiff that shoe, but it's got that split sole, which means a bit flexible. Maybe that's the way. <laughs> yeah, maybe a bit, a bit in between. <laughs> in between. Okay, so fourth and final boulder will be out next, and let's just look at the leaderboard. Natalia Grossman fights back to get back on top. Camila Moroni in second, Lena in third, Brooke Rabatut down in fourth, Stasha fifth, and Claire Coomer in sixth. Okay, and it is all to play for at this stage. Yep, anything can happen right now. I mean, I, I think Natalia and Camilla are quite set, but if they don't move on this last boulder and Elena does, it can change a lot of things. Exactly, if Elena gets the top and they don't. If she flashes this last boulder and they don't get even zoned, she wins. Yeah, <laughs> so everything on the table. Ooh! How much skin has Stasha got left, though? Because this is physical, and we know she's been struggling with this a little bit. Gets that toe, then unlocks the toe. Someone take a photo of that. And <laughs> she goes. That would make a great photo. <laughs> really would. Jan Vert, where you're at. Get a snap in, sir. <laughs> Out she yeah, comes. She knows what she needs to do. Oh, come on, that's so cool. Up she goes into this crimp, locks it off. You can see the thumb wrapping over the fingers to lock off that crimp. And then this move just looks so powerful. Oh, oh. the pinch. Kicks the this foot last out. right. Yes, Amazing. a flash for Stasha. No, a second. Oh, sorry, second, sorry. Yeah. I got carried away. <laughs> Like that last move on that like terrible sloper pinch, she made that look yeah, awesome. Well, I was about to say, I wonder if that hole, because, it, because it's a bit slopey, will it affect her with the skin. It clearly didn't. But that takes a lot of skin, that hold. Like, it's horrible. Look at this. All the way around she goes. A little 360. Oh, looks about chilled at that point. It's styling it out. So Stasha moves to the right-hand side of the stage where she'll be waiting for the results, but this is her top. It was, it's a good hold, that one, where she rotated on. And then that pinch and the kick. But that move, we'll see how the others do, but it looks super hard. Yeah, I think this, she just made that look easier than it is, that boulder. Yeah, because she, it's like quite slanted the wall, and that's a bad pinch. And the fact that she kept her left hand, I think that helped a lot. If she had let go, she probably would have swung a bit too far to the right and then lost the top hold. That's where we are. Women's four in this final year. Athletes have already gone through the qualifying stages, the semi-finals this morning. Not enough, not a lot of time to recover. And they're back at it again. Mm. And Brooke Rabatou is up. Currently down in fifth. Really needs a top here. Oh, oh. Missed out on the slab on women's on boulder three. Ah. Interesting. 
is it doesn't jump and release. So Stasha jumped and released that foot at the same time. Yeah, she kept her toe hook, although here Brooke went full force and just like squeezed that left hand big time. Oh, makes it more of a static jump, so it's harder for the momentum, but I think she'll... She'll be closer oh, to yeah. the hold. As it proves to be, so she's up and going, chalks up. Oh, fig four in a competition. I love this. Oh. I want her to use that so much just because I want a fig four move. Figure four is when you put your legs over your arm. It's an ice climbing, or originally was an ice climbing move. But we are yeah. starting to see it in climbing more and more. In rock yeah, climbing. but I find it, it's really hard to set and like to force people to do that move. I guess it like changes big time height wise too. Yeah, it's very but specific. But she manages to go so she made that pinch look very undramatic. Almost holding it like a sloper. Ooh, kicks things better of it. Drops back down to rest. Yeah, she lost her left hand and just like swung way out to the right, which makes it much harder to hold. So it's all about that left hand on that final move that seems to be so far. Stasha kept it in. Look at that. Feet higher than your head. And right now, I guess she's fighting for a podium place because she unfortunately didn't get zone on the slab. Yeah. Didn't go her way for that one. So but she... what she also did differently here is that she had her left foot on the black volume, although Stasha had the left on the red. Great shot there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's sometimes more nerve-wracking being, I'm sure it is more nerve-wracking being an audience and you're on stage. At least you can do something if you're yeah. climbing. We just have to watch. Yeah, and it's always hard to like know what the climbers are thinking, so it's like you're stressing for them, but they're not stressed, I mean. Yeah, I, I try to stay non-committal like, in this job, but like I cannot help but getting involved. Yeah. I just get so into it. Yeah, it's same. exhausting. I finish a comp, but I'm exhausted. That's where it should be. That is the juggy hold that she goes to. And she's not even holding that jug to get to that zone hold. Big bump up again, not pinching it, just in the slope, but a minute to go. Oh. Right, she'll have time for another. A little rest and then I guess her last attempt. So, this is it, game time for Brooke Rabatou in fourth at the moment. She'll need a top here. She wants to get up into the podium places. Yeah, she just... Out. How far can you go to the right before it's like impossible to hold up? I mean, she yeah. was like almost an impossible looking move there. You can see she looks tired. Come on. Oh, oh again. <laughs> I think Brooke will be done. And remember, she'll probably be climbing in the lead as well. Yeah, her skin is. Oh. Gonna have to recuperate in just like one day. Yeah, the rest day for her tomorrow is gonna be very chilled out, I'd imagine. She leaves the stage in fourth place, so no podium for her here tonight. Goes and joins Stasha. Yeah, I guess Stasha will also be stressing a bit because it's her podium place that's on the line right now. Yeah, Stasha in third. Look how far her body swings to the right here. Almost impossible. Look, just past yeah. the point and then And see. that top hold isn't actually that good. No. <laughs> ah, but so you can tell she gave it all. Yeah, there is nothing left. I just <laughs> gets a mouthful of chocolate there. Well deserved. <laughs> and Brooke is just looking at her skin off to the right. Okay. Sixth position, one top, one zone. Andrea will want something here. How much will this mean to her to top something like this for her own like sense of, of achievement and you know Oh it, it she'd love it. Like topping borders is so satisfying and like especially in finals. Ooh, made the jump. Yeah, made the jump easy there. And this next sequence so far hasn't been too bad, just too 
quite straightforward climber style moves here. She seems to be quite far out. Going in with the same method as Dasha. Nice. Yeah, gets it this time. And then will she pinch or will she go to the sloper? Goes to the Come sloper. Uh, she has her left foot on the red. Oh! oh. Her foot slips off the black. But you can tell she's starting to get tired right now. Yeah, she's going to have to rest between this. The problem with this end is, is the feet, really, isn't it? The, the hands aren't too bad. We know that red isn't yeah. as good as it looks, but the feet are just in, in an awkward position to make this move. Yeah, you're really uncomfortable, and yeah, finding that right movement is hard. That's an amazing looking move. So cool. Yeah. She comes in, matches it. Bumped around just to get herself set in the right position. Got some fingers taped too. But yeah, her foot slips off. Well, she's got time. Two minutes coming up now on the clock. You can see the clock. That's what the athletes see when they're on stage. Those big screens. There's a few dotted around the arena. Yeah, and I guess also like right now she got to the last move and she was really close. So I'm guessing right now she's chosen to rest and give maybe one last or maybe two attempts but that's also sometimes hard to decide on like whether to give yourself two minute rest and then just go at 30 seconds and just say okay this is just like I'm gonna make it yeah, now. all or nothing time. Yeah. Well she's doing her country proud right now team Switzerland represented out here tonight touches with the foot you don't need to use it, you just need to touch it. Oh, and drops that. I think, yeah, you're right, getting a little tired. Which is understandable, let's be yeah. honest. I mean, also, these finals are quite early compared to other finals that we've had in Boulder. They're usually like at 8 pm, so you do have those like, extra two hours. Yeah, and the athletes leaving the venue, going back to hotels wherever they're staying, they're having to travel all the way back yeah, in. It's tiring. It's tiring, yeah. So she gets it this time. That's under a minute now. Kicks up in order to get the crimp. Oh. Yeah, trying to get swing because powering out. Come on. Oh, you can hear her. That feeling is one that, you know, if you climb, you know, when you, your arms just aren't responding yeah. to what you want them to do. Yeah. It's just you haven't got that extra 20%, 10%, whatever yeah. you need. That was Stasha and Brooke just chatting it through. Andrea, congratulations. What a final for you. She will leave, join the fellow athletes on the right-hand side of the stage. Just picking up actually them chatting yeah, on you the can right. Hear it a bit. That's really cool. Where are the microphones for them to I don't know. I don't think I don't know if it's cool or kind of slightly creepy, but they're, yeah. they're there somewhere. I mean I don't know if it's kind of <laughs> I guess they're talking More about chocolate, it. yes, Stasha. See this is this is talk about Stasha amazing. She brought Toblerone onto the stage, she's got chocolate on her hands. Is that chocolate or blood? I don't know. I think it was chocolate. But she also had bloody fingers. Bloody fingers, right. So Elena is sitting in fifth. She had a slow start and a dynamic end. Two flashes in a row for her. If she can get a top here, she will jump up into third position, knocking Stasha down. Yeah, because right now... So she needs a top in three attempts or a zone in three the top in four attempts for gold. Yeah, but that's if, I guess, Natalia and Camilla don't do anything. Exactly, like, yeah, that's currently what's I going on. Doubt, yeah. <laughs> yes, I've heard they've got some skill between them, those two. Oh, so she kept the toe hook. She heads straight back onto the wall. Ah, she changes feet. Nice. Pirouettes around, facing the wall once again. Matches on the volume. And that's the difference in power, wasn't it? Because Andrea needed like a bit of a swing in order yeah. to get that. She did it more statically. Trying to 
work out the position of this foot. Got the toe hook in at the moment. Now brings the left through. Oh! Once again, breaking the beater on these boulders. Yeah, I think for this move, dynamic is a way to go. Yeah, she was trying to do it statically, wasn't she? Yeah, that just makes it so much harder, I think. But we did watch her earlier put her uh, feet it's, above yeah. her head, so... And she watched actually not that far. Yeah, she was close. All right, so different method. Coaches, I think the coaches couldn't quite believe that was working. It was like, no, oh, hang on a sec, it's happening. <laughs> But yeah, you can see she's getting pumped. Under two minutes. Elena needs a top here. Then she goes straight back in. Which method will she choose? More dynamic or more static at the top? And will she have the energy to get there again? That beautiful move circling around. How much control in that movement. Come on. To the sloper. I think she's looking to do it statically again. Oh no, maybe not. No. Oh. I'm gritting my teeth every time they do that move. It's like it's so close to the point yeah. where they're going to stick it. It's like, oh, they're going to hold, they're going to hold, they're going to hold. Oh no, they don't. Oh, they don't. <laughs> Down they go. Look at it all the way out, round, round. And this just proves like how strong Stasha was by being able to keep holding that blue hold. I remember Stasha got this second go. Mm. And um, also it amazes me how she can climb so well with like little rest. Yeah, it's very, very strong here. Keep an eye on her for the future. Up she goes with the sloper. Oh. Powering out now, I think. This will leave her outside of the podium places. <laughs> Suddenly, <Stasha's> stressing. <laughs> yeah, because this is for the podium places, really, because Camilla yeah. and Natalia are already in. Yeah. Down she goes. It's not going to be enough. Oh, so we know. Stasha. We know that Stasha's going to get the bronze. Burn, yeah. <laughs> Unless she's realised it there. Stasha Gale will walk away with our first medal of this evening. And you know what? That woman deserves that medal. She yeah. worked so hard to come back from that injury she received, the training she puts in. Mm -hmm. She studies full time as well. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate. <laughs> time her own all round. <laughs> Oh, you guys should be tasting all the maltine. <laughs> so much better. Wow, that's the most controversial thing we've said all evening. People are going to be angry in the comments, Sophia. You can't say that. So, Stasha oh, with the bronze. So cool. And now it's going to be between Camilla and Natalia. Let's look at the scores. I think, I mean, it's, it's going to come down who tops, who gets zones, who makes yeah. a mistake at this stage. I guess here, Camilla really needs to either like flash, which I guess won't happen now, or Natalia just gives like a gazillion attempts and doesn't top. Exactly. If she does this quickly, it's in her court and she's putting yeah. the pressure on Natalia. If she doesn't, then it's you're leaving it up to someone else to make that mistake. Yeah. Camilla will have to watch from the sidelines as well. Huge move. She didn't get, do like the 360 turn. She went in straight as a weakling. Yeah, just locked those wrists off. And now it makes it first time. Super strong. Second attempt here. Easy. Oh. Right, well, second go for Camilla. She will move into first at the moment. She's oh. guaranteed a silver already, remember? I got chills. So happy for her. Italy, I hope you're standing up and celebrating right now because Camilla has just done your country proud. She waves to the audience. That was amazing. That move, no spin needed, straight into the undercling, as you said, or using it like an undercling. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so Camilla has a silver medal for sure. For sure. Now it just, I guess, depends on Italy. 
Exactly. Stasha has the bronze. And Natalia, will she get silver or will it be gold here in Moscow? And she actually matches quite quickly, which stops the swing too. Well, you couldn't write this script. We are down to the last climber, last boulder. Who will walk away with the gold here tonight? That lady there has silver. Well, she has gold at the moment, but she might be bumped down to silver if yeah. Natalia can climb this quickly. Yeah, that puts a bit more pressure on this Holly right now because it was the last boulder. And this will be... I mean, Camilla does have... For gold or not. There you go, top in six attempts or zone in five and top in seven attempts. Complicated that, but we're looking for zones and tops quickly. Yeah. Let's summarise that one. But I think the way she's been climbing recently, it's just going to... I don't want to jinx it, so I'm not going to say anything. Okay, don't. I'll, 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 I'll tell the stats. So, flash the first one, flash the second, fourth attempt oh, on the third. The first, oh, she's smiling. I think Natalia Grossman is on another level here tonight. So... I think she knows she can make it, and... Up she goes into the zone hold, locks it off powerfully up to the sloper. Now we'll look for this little kick and a flick. Gets oh, it first so time. So strong. Natalia Grossman is our gold medalist here tonight. Camilla oh, Moroni. Tears too. Pushed to second silver. Stasha Go in third. Wow, Sophia, what a final. This was awesome to watch. Like, oh. And it's also awesome to see someone else. Oh. it runs across, best friends, teammates. Ah, this season has had it all, ladies and gentlemen. We've come back from Corona. We finished here in Moscow for the World Championships. Yeah. The women's final is done. Sophia, I, in a minute, I'm going to have to do my run thing downstairs to interview these guys. So I just want to say my thank yous and goodbye now, just in case yeah. I run out rudely. <laughs> OK, no problem. I know it's always disappointing coming from a semi-finals into this. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for all your expertise Thank you here for tonight. having me. It was really fun. So those women are stars. They will get the flower ceremony in a couple of minutes, and then I'll go speak to them, and then we'll have our podium. I hope you enjoyed that back at home. This is the moment when Natalia got her gold medal and is world champion. Yeah, honestly, hats off for the root setters. Like, the borders were really cool. Yeah, there wasn't a down moment in that whole final. Oh, I enjoyed no. every second yeah. of that. So we pause watching the scenes from Natalia. How she stuck that. Look at the core tension. Amazing. Amazing. Right, I'm going to go down. I'll leave you guys to enjoy this flower ceremony. I'm going to go and speak to Natalia. Sophia, I'll say goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye, and thank you for having me. So we see the confirmation of the results. Natalia Grossman gold, Camilla Moroni in second place with the silver, and Stasha Gejo gets the bronze. I'll see you guys in a couple of seconds. Совсем скоро мы начнем официальную церемонию награждения с официальными лицами. В общем, можно не торопиться на выход, там наверняка все равно будет очередь. Вот, да, такой лайфхак. Можно не стоять в очереди, а просто посидеть здесь с нами, остаться в зале. Друзья, всем большое спасибо. Друзья, с вами на финалах в микрофон кричали и переживали вместе с вами.
Natalia, you are a world champion. You've got the gold medal. I can see by the smile on your face how much that means to you. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, exciting. <laughs> I mean, what a final. It came back and forth. We saw lots of tops. Was it as exciting out there on the stage as it was for us watching you climb? It felt exciting to me. I don't know. It was, yeah, <laughs> really no, I know. I know this is a huge moment for you. Take a moment to soak it all in. You're a world champion. You've had an amazing season. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Well, just like that, our women's final is over and what an emotional moment for all taking part. Natalia Grossman with the gold medal. She is world champion. Second place, Camilla Maroney. And third with that bronze, Stasha Gale. Oh, thank you to Sophia Yokoyama for joining Welcome me here the this evening. Ceremony of the IFSC world Fantastic co-commentator, so much expert. Advice. So we watch now the podium places. Let's see these athletes crowned here tonight in Moscow. Awards will be presented by Nagrady Budut Vruchet. 
Zebra Gavridge, Secretary General of the International Federation of Sport Climbing. Debra Gavridge, General Secretary of the International Federation of Skalalazania. Marco Maria Scalarius, the President of the International Federation of Sport Climbing. Marco Maria Scalarius, President of the International Federation of Skalalazania. Dmitry Bichkov, CFR President. Dmitry Anatolievich Bichkov, President FSR. So, uh... Official top brass of the IFSC are out stage, onto the stage to present the these medalists. World Championship 2021. And, and there are our top three fantastic performances from them. They wait. Natalia was shell shocked a little bit when I was speaking to her. Just so much to take in for her. Bronze medalists. Stachio will pick up Stasha another Kiyo. medal to her collection. She stands with the bronze. It was a wonderful Kiyo. moment, up and down emotionally. She top boulders. She didn't top boulders, but she walks away with that bronze medal. Fist bumps. That's what I like to see, Stasha. Fist bump the official. Yes, please. Silver medalists representing Italy. Camilla Moroni. Camilla Moroni, wow. A roller coaster ride for her. Camilla Silver Moroni. medal around her neck. Holds the trophy. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, Natalia Grossman will step up to the top spot of the podium. Gold medalist and the winner of the Boulder World Championship 2021. Representing United States of America, Natalia Grossman. She's done it. What a performance from her. The gold medal around her neck. She will be world champion at bouldering. There's a national anthem will echo around this stadium. I'm sure she'll stand there and think about all that hard work, the training, the dedication that goes into this moment for the Ladies special athlete. Please stand for the national anthem of USA. Дамы и господа, прошу всех встать. Звучит государственный гимн Соединенных Штатов Америки. Natalia Grossman is crowned world champion. Tears in her eyes as she savors this moment. Thank you so much for watching tonight, everyone who has joined us. We'll be back tomorrow for the men's semi-final and final. Monday is the qualifying for the lead, and then Tuesday will be the lead semi-finals and finals. So a packed couple of days of climbing still to come. These three women for tonight will rest. <laughs> I'm sure we'll see Natalia for sure back in the lead competition. The other two, we'll see. But wonderful performances all round. So, we call it for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Dear guests, our it's been an incredible tomorrow. night of entertainment. For you tomorrow. Top performances, and we will be back very soon for more action from the World Championships here in Moscow.